Hey, welcome back to another edition of uh, Dispatches from Holly McKay. Today we have, we're going to look at an interesting fellow, um, the latest leader of Al-Qaeda, one Saif Al-Adel, who seems to have found a friend in Iran. Holly, tell us a little bit about this. Right. So it's still a little bit of a debate as to who the new leader of Al Qaeda is. Of course, it was Osama bin Laden for many years. And then his deputy, Ayman Zawahiri, took over and he was killed by a US uh, drone uh, in Kabul last year. And so it's been a little bit of a mystery since then. But so far, intelligence, uh, both from the US and also from the United Nations and some other countries, have pointed to a man by the name of Saif al Adel. Uh, he's actually actually Egyptian, um, and so he is assumed to be the new leader of, of Al-Qaeda, but um, contrary to uh, first thought, he's not hiding in Afghanistan or Yemen or Pakistan. He's actually in Iran. Um, supposedly, of course, Iran denies this, but they've also been denying their connections to Al-Qaeda for a really long time. But it just shows you the strength of this quite strange relationship and the two the two groups uh so to speak the religious regime in iran and also al-qaeda are strange bedfellows because obviously iran sees itself as the leader of the shia world uh, which is very much at odds with al-qaeda which is very vehemently sunni um, but obviously when things, when you have mutual enemies, uh, mutual enemies, maybe governments or foreign countries or the United States, um, that can tend to be an alliance that brings uh, these people together. And it's really been the case between Iran and Al-Qaeda for quite a long time. And if you look back at the history, and you're going back to kind of relations between them working together um, back in the 90s um, in Mogadishu and other areas where uh, the US was sort of had a footprint and you could see um, these mutual, these enemies that, that had a mutual enemy in the United States starting to work together a bit there. And then of course, when uh, the wars happened in both Afghanistan in Iraq, which Iran, Iran borders both those countries, um, you started to see that alliance kind of working against the United States uh, for really since then. It's It's been a, a big surge. And you've seen a lot of the leaders over the years, um, including Osama bin Laden's son at one point, go to Iran. And there is believed to be quite an al-Qaeda contingency um, laying low in Iran at the moment. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, you know, if you look at the pattern of the Iranians in the, particularly the last few years, and, and particularly since the fall of Afghanistan, um, you're you do see, you know, the Iranians are they're they seem to be exploring different ways to increase their influence, and uh, and so this uh, development in terms of getting cozier with a you know essentially a very religious foe uh in from a traditional standpoint it, for convenience purposes seems to be yeah you know, an interesting development but then, then again you also see the iran you know the iranians just uh are have reestablished relationships with saudi arabia so um you know maybe tehran is moving away from the um you know the kind of hardline Soleimani thing that they were doing for many years, and and this is a new development of um, how they are trying to Im improve their their lot and influence in the Middle East. I mean, you've been watching this for a very long time. You know, how do you how do you what's your what's your read on what the Iranian thinking is actually up to? I I do think it's wishful thinking to think that Iran would be moving anywhere from its hardline. Um, stance. I do think Iran's ultimate goal is to have that hegemony in the Middle East, and that means hegemony not only within its country, but obviously very strong influence outside its borders, but that also means having influence with terrorist groups. Um, and of course, a group like Al-Qaeda, um, Iran would be sort of one of the first places theoretically that uh, a group like Al-Qaeda would go and attack, um, because Shia, you know, are considered to be um, heretics, really, by these hardline uh, Sunni extremists. So I think in keeping Iran or keeping Al Qaeda on their side and having um, a core contingency of leadership there and offering them some sort of safe haven, you know, over the years they've been able to offer them 
weapons or passports to cross borders um, and all sorts of other things that they're able to keep them in line and therefore in their world protect Iran from these big attacks. And if you really look back at the last 20 years and sort of the amount of, of terrorist activity that existed in and around Iran's borders, it is really quite remarkable that it hasn't endured um, any sort of massive attacks. Of course, there have been smaller ones, but nothing on a large scale, nothing like, for example, what Pakistan, um, which is also majority Sunni Muslim, have endured. So um, that doesn't come without, um, you know, just strategic alliances and, and talks behind doors. That's just not a physical security thing. That is agreements that you have. Um, and I'm sure as we can see, Iran has very strong agreements with groups like al-Qaeda in order to try to keep its own border safe and also exercise um, a certain degree of power in the area. So really what Tehran gets out of rubbing elbows with al-Qaeda is it gets domination, it gets control, and it gets assurances that the Shia majority nation uh, will not be subject to Sunni extremist attacks. Yeah, well... Um, strategic on their part. And, you know, I mean, you know, we have to remember we are talking about when all is said and done, you know, these are Persians, right? You know, they're, uh, these are, these are people that have been playing the games of empire for longer than any of us have been around. And um, so the last question of this particular uh, session is, um, so what's the U.S. position in all this as we watch these maneuvers by Iran uh, and the latest developments and what they're doing, you know, how do we react to that? Because uh, it, it it kind of changes the game of how we need to interact with the Middle yeah. East. To be honest, I don't see anything that makes me think we've changed our Iran policy really in any way. Obviously, with the previous administration, it was it was a very clear hardline stance against Iran from every possible direction. Uh, with the current administration, I think there is still a hope to revive um, the Iranian deal and to somehow, you know, enter into some sort of diplomatic agreement with them. Um, I think that was going to be very awkward Um considering the evidence really is there about these al-Qaeda ties and has been there a long time. You just have to go back to the 9-11 commission report and, and you can read a lot more about it there. But I think it's, uh, I don't really see any clear or change in policy. And I think it's going to be a really challenging one uh, for policymakers to try to um, maneuver simply because people are so determined to revive that deal um, that this would be something that I think would very much jeopardize that. And I think also what's really interesting and, and quite disconcerting is the US has far less capacity to keep tabs on al-Qaeda's movements um, in Iran. So we don't have you know, diplomatic relationships, we don't have embassies, we don't have um, you know, huge amounts of, of intelligence personnel or anything like that um, compared to Afghanistan and, and Pakistan, which is previously where uh, the majority of al-Qaeda operatives uh, resided. So we don't have the eyes or the ears um, to kind of keep tabs on their movements in Iran. So that certainly poses another big challenge for the U.S. intelligence community. Hmm. Well, that description basically says that Al-Qaeda seems to have found its next perfect sanctuary, doesn't it? It does. And it's, um, as I said, it's been there a long time. And, and whether or not it grows from this point, uh, we can only try to imagine, because again, it's very hard to keep those close tabs. But please read the Substack, and you'll get uh, some more information on uh, what's happening between Iran and Al-Qaeda. All right. Well, thank you, Holly. And it's always good to uh, expand on the issues with you. It's a fascinating part of the world and will continue to be for some time. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Dennis.